Hi guys, welcome back to my Oka channel. I know it's been a really long time since I last uploaded and I'm really sorry about that. I am doing full-time teaching now so I've been more occupied with that. But yeah, I do kind of miss filming a little bit so I decided today I would do a tutorial video for you guys. Today I will be covering how to do double tonguing in three simple steps. Okay, just before I start, I know a lot of you out there that are watching this video are beginners on the flute and you're probably feeling really excited. But before you watch any further, this video is not for you beginners out there. This video is only for people who can already produce a really clear and good tone on all of the register on the flute. So if you're still struggling with producing a clear tone or playing the high notes or the low notes, then this is not the video for you. So you click away right now, like seriously. If you're not sure of the standard, usually I would say about A, B, grade four, grade five standard, if you're in Australia. Um, I think it's the equivalent in ABRSM. That is the rough level I would suggest you're on before you start attempting this technique. Okay, now that we've got that other way, let's get into it. So the first question I want to answer is what is double tying used for? Double tying is a technique that you can use in your pieces in fast passages which would allow you to play a stream of tongue notes much much faster than if you were just using single tongue. And not to mention it's also something you can use to flex on other people. Especially on other woodwind instruments because I'm pretty sure it's a lot harder to double tongue on other woodwind instruments compared to the flute. So we're pretty lucky. Alright, step one. The first step is actually to do this away from the flute. So we're not going to use the instrument at all. So put your flute down and leave it. There are two phonetic ways to spell out the double tonguing sound. One is T-U-K-U tuku and then the second one is like a softer approach D-U-G-U duku. I personally prefer and recommend the first one because I feel like it's a lot clearer and it brings your tongue closer to the front of your mouth which I think sounds better. But you can try both and make your own decision because everyone has different anatomy around here so Experiment and see what works for you. Now, one of the most important things that you have to look out for when you're doing double tonguing, and not a lot of teachers mention this, is to keep your air flowing. You can't let your tonguing stop your airflow because that's not gonna sound good. So for this step, all you have to do is to practice blowing air out while saying tuk, 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 and that's it. So take a deep breath inside out and then the second time you do exactly the same thing but add in your tongue and that's it I kind of feel like I'm teaching a meditation class when I'm doing this but it's a bit weird but it's really important that you learn how to do this smoothly and that you're not squeezing anything because once you start squeezing everything else is just going to go wrong afterwards and you're not going to be able to develop a light and fast tongue so this step is actually really important okay so on to step two this step is where you can apply everything you just did but onto a flute so I would suggest starting on a comfortable note on the flute. For example, I'm going to use F major because I feel like that's a really nice register and it doesn't go too high or too low. We're going to play a scale ascending and descending, eight semiquavers on each note and it's going to sound something like this. doing this be super aware of how you're distributing your air. Your air shouldn't stop and it should almost go through the note onto the next one. Don't overstrain your tongue as well it should be easy and light and keep it closer to the front. Try to think of your tongue riding on top of the air while you play. So this is your air and this is your tongue. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right guys, last step, step three. We're almost there. There's just one more thing you need to do to get this technique down is to practice step two, but with a metronome. I know lots of you must hate the metronome, but this is really, really necessary. And it's because in the beginning, your tongue's gonna be quite uneven and that's normal. 
but the only way to fix this is to start really slow with the metronome and slowly build up your speed. I'm gonna repeat that, start slow. Like seriously, start slow. You have to be really patient with yourself and don't move on to a faster tempo before you've mastered the slow one. Don't just rush into really fast double tonguing because you think you can. That way, you're not gonna build up a good foundation and you might even learn it wrong. So yeah, that's it guys. I've broken double tongue down into three simple steps. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you did, remember to like and thumbs up and subscribe and turn on the notification button so you know whenever I post a new video because I don't know when that's going to be next time. And remember to check out my social media, follow me on Instagram, I'll leave the link in the description box down below. That's it guys, happy practicing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!